Now, the largest mining event on the continent kicks off uh, this Monday in Cape Town and it brings together investors, uh, mining and exploration companies, mining services companies and government stakeholders from across Africa. But is the host country uh, investor ready uh, in its mining sector? Uh, being South Africa, of course, Alan Reed, who's the director of corporate and commercial practice at uh, CDH, joins us uh, for more. Alan, perhaps let's kick off at that point. Are we investor ready for the mining in Durban next week? Uh, thank you, Fifi. It's um, a position which is unfortunately not crystallized. We have the Mining Charter 3, which was introduced in June and then subsequently suspended. That had severe repercussions for investor confidence in the mining industry in South Africa. Uh, you've probably read, in excess of 50 billion rand was wiped off the market caps of uh, mining companies in a day of the announcement. Since then, there has been a court case which was heard in November regarding once empowered, always empowered, which plays into the mining charter by way of uh, BE ownership. We haven't got judgment on that. That is still uncertain. We have the mining charter itself going to court for review on the 19th of February. And at this stage in time, there's no dialogue between the Chamber of Mines and the the minister. See, that's a problem though, because that court case or the uh, announcement being made on the 19th of February, the mining charts is happening, or the mining endeavor is happening next week. Correct. So, how is this going to impact the kind of conversations that are going to be had, the kind of conversations you're going to be having next week? I think we're going to take a lead from um, the direction that's taken by Cyril Ramaphosa in Davos. It's a upbeat message that is conveyed. And he's also specifically dealt with the mining charter and what has to be done in South Africa in regard to that charter in furtherance of the improvement of South Africa as an investment destination. So the feeling, I think, what, what's going to be carried across to investors at the mining in Darba is the fact that there is improvement in the future. Mm -hmm. Things may look bleak and uncertain at the moment, but with conversations between uh, somebody of the stature of Solar Ramaphosa and the mining industry, I'm sure we can come to some sort of uh, position which is acceptable to all parties. Uh, Alan, just remind us again, what were some of the, conten the contentious issues in Mining Charter 3? Right, I, I think to understand, well, we'll get to that, but the, I think to understand the impact of the Mining Charter on the mm. market, one must understand that it was sprung on the industry as a surprise. The particularly contentious issues revolve around BE ownership. The ownership percentage for BE companies was increased from 26 to 30%. But that 30% is not merely 30%. It has to be divided 14% to black entrepreneurs, 8% to communities, and 8% to um, employees. Now, you have a number of mining companies which really have BE structures in place. To rearrange that BE structure is extremely costly. And the mining charter always also envisages that a lot of these deals will be vendor financed. And it speaks specifically of the loans which are incurred for purposes of furthering black economic acquisition of shares being repaid from dividends. Uh, as you will know, there are very few mining companies that at the moment are paying dividends. And what is worse, after 10 years, that debt is written off. So it could be that the sellers or the vendors of those shares are going to suffer an enormous loss. Mm. The other difficulty is the fact that there is, um, for new prospecting rights, a requirement that black economic empowerment must be at least 50.1%. Now that is all good and well, but as a general rule, it's not the black economic investor who is financing or funding the prospecting or exploration. So you have a minority shareholder who's basically funding the prospecting. If you then get to a stage where you want to apply for mining right in respect to the prospecting that you have been doing, your black economic empowerment partner has to dilute 
and that is going to cause serious problems in relationships. Mm. Alan, you know, uh, for a number of years now, uh, the FDI into the mining sector has been on the decline and the, uh, the uh, regulatory uncertainty hasn't helped matters. Who exactly have we been uh, losing investments out to and who, who, who are we at threat of losing further investments to uh, should the, uh, the regulatory uh, mess not be cleaned up? And I think one must appreciate that investments will always follow resources. Right. So I, I think South Africa is in a position where it has enormous resources. So there will always be some investment. However, you're seeing growing investment in West Africa, Ghana, gold mining in Ghana, East Africa, Tanzania, Kenya, and in platinum, we must watch Zimbabwe. Um, there's been a ch change in Zimbabwe. They are re-looking at their black economic empowerment shareholding, particularly mm. for platinum, and we could lose significant investment to Zimbabwe. Mm. Can I, can I get your views on, on, on safety? Because I imagine that this is also something that's going to be discussed at the mining in Daba next week. Uh, we've just fortunately had good news out mm -hmm. of Sabania that the workers were pulled there to ground. I mean, what are, what, are, what, what, what's the sector been doing or what is the sector doing to increase uh, safety for mine workers uh, uh, here in South Africa? It's on every mining company's agenda mm. to look at safety at literally every board meeting that they have. Mm. It's reviewed, it's checked, there are systems in place, there are training programs in place. It, it, it is a dangerous occupation, but mining companies are acutely aware and have policies and procedures in place, which they do follow. Mm -hmm. They follow. Um, one last thing, uh, in terms of the uh, uncertainty, uh, bringing it back to that mining charter, are you aware of how many deals were essentially put on ice or are even on ice right now as a result of us not really having clarity on the regulatory uh, framework? In my practice alone, at least five. In which sectors? Platinum, uh, chiefly platinum. Mm. The outlook platinum for jobs chrome. then. So if, 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 if all the delegates that are attending the mining sector next week don't hear what they want to hear, particularly from uh, Mineral Resources Minister Musebenzi Zwane, who is going to be giving the opening address. What's the outlook? I don't know that he will be giving the opening address. Has it changed? Um, I don't know. Um, there was speculation that he may not. But um, I believe if he does, he is going to have to convey the message that Sir Romopoza has been conveying as well. Mm. There must be some sort of unity um, in government mm. and the voice, they must speak with one voice. Innovation, technology in the mining sector? Must uh, come. Must come. It must come. It's, is it coming? It, it's coming very slowly. Um, a lot of our mines are not suitable, for example, for mechanical mining. The, the shafts are too narrow or the faces are split and it's very difficult to actually get um, mechanical mining into particularly our platinum mines. But you are seeing, um, for example, in coal, and sometimes in chrome, to a lesser extent where you are getting mechanized mining. And I believe that going forward, you're going to see a lot more in the line of robotics, uh, computer control operations, and um, you're going to have a change in the workforce. It's going to be um, a more uh, trained and, and educated electronically workforce uh, going forward. So not necessarily less jobs, but more skilled more jobs. More skilled jobs, yes. This is good news. <laughs> Alan, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for Thank your you time. Much, that was Alan Reed, who's a director of corporate and commercial practice at CDH.